What you guys got another video here for you on things to do after building your computer so you've built your pc and now you want to know what to do after that so that's what we're going to be doing in this video now depending on what operating system you choose whether you choose linux or windows will be the first thing you're going to have to do so we're going to go ahead and install uh, windows 11 on here and once we get windows 11 on we will then be able to move on to the next stage on windows 11 and windows 10 there is some privacy concerns that you might want to deal with and you can deal with that uh, right at the installation by saying no to a lot of these um, uh, settings here this is data collecting diagnostic improving kin and typing and some other settings which you can deal with right here now once you get to the desktop you'll be able to head over to the motherboard manufacturers website go to the support page and then hit the download button to download all the latest drivers for that motherboard you're going to have all your chipset drivers audio drivers uh, network drivers and other types of drivers that you may need for your system now windows does a pretty good job at downloading and installing drivers for you but i always prefer to download and install the drivers from the manufacturer's website this way you get the very latest drivers and you don't have any issues i've had issues where microsoft have messed up by downloading older drivers and I prefer to get them straight from the motherboard manufacturers website like this now if you want to go ahead and flash your BIOS you can do that's entirely up to you I'm gonna leave this one out for this video and just go ahead and go through all of this uh, scenario here where we're going to install all of these now this one is the RGB software you're gonna need to do RGB software if you have any sort of RGB fans on your system this will help you control your rgb so i'm going to go ahead and get all of these installed on the system and then we can move on to the next stage now one of the more important ones is your chipset drivers if you check in your device manager you may see some areas that don't have any drivers and if you install your chipset drivers a lot of the time this will resolve a lot of these issues and it will find the drivers for that particular missing driver you have there sometimes windows has trouble finding those and uh, this is the quickest and easiest way to get the latest chipset drivers for that system so go ahead and get those installed as well now the next type of drivers i like to install is the graphics drivers so whether you've got an amd uh, type graphics card or an nvidia type graphics card you're going to need those drivers to be installed on your system and i prefer to go to the manufacturer's website and download the correct drivers from there and get them installed onto my computer so that is what I tend to do myself. Now, I know a lot of people may rely on Windows to download their NVIDIA drivers or AMD drivers for them, but I prefer to do it this way. That way I know I get the very latest driver and I don't have any issues. Now, next one can be a bit of a pain to get right, and that is syncing all of your RGB lights. Now, if you've built a computer that has RGB in there, you're going to need to sync all of those together to the color scheme that you want and you're going to need to download a bunch of software and get it installed and that will look something like this on the screen now this is ASRock's uh, version and again depending on what type of system you've got once you get it set up and you've got all of the correct software on there you can get all your color scheme the way you want and that way you can get your uh, lighting the way you like it whether you like it bright dim or whether you want to sync it all in one color or whatever it is you want to do so that is basically how I get mine set up and that can be a bit of a pain and take a bit of time. So if you don't want RGB, then don't build a PC with RGB in there. Now we've got all the lights sorted out, we can now head off into the BIOS and what we're going to do here is enable XMP. If your memory supports XMP, we're going to go ahead and enable that feature. You can see the DRAM frequency as default is DDR4-2666. By enabling the XMP settings, this will make our memory 3600, which will give us a performance boost. So I'm going to go ahead and enable that feature now. So let's go ahead and it's, you can see it's on auto here. I'm just going to change this to XMP 2.0 profile and we can now save those settings and we've now uh, give our system a performance boost. Once I save these settings, these will be set to DDR4 3600. Next up, let's take a look at the noisy fan situation. When you build your PC, all of your fans may be spinning at 100%. So we can go into the BIOS and we can use the fan tuning software to basically optimize our fans so they run a lot more slower when we're idle. When we're using it for gaming or video editing, 
this will then uh, crank up the uh, speed of the fan and make it much more cooler in the system but you don't need to have them running at 100 percent all the time and this is where the fan tuning software comes in to basically tune all of your fans you can do them manually if you wish but this is a really good way of getting your fans in a nice optimal uh, setting now today's sponsor of today's video is cd key cells you're going to need to activate your version of windows 10 pro or windows 11 pro you can use my promo code capital b capital r 09 head over to the cd key sales website i'll leave the links in the video description click on those links and you'll be able to purchase yourself a key once you've got that key you can hit the start button hit the settings pane and then basically we can go to the activate button you can see it saying activate now we can click on this and you can see how system is not activated because we've just built it so i'm going to click on change product key and we're going to put in our key that we've just purchased so i'm going to drop that in there like so by copying and paste it and then we can click on the next button to go to the next stage once we click on this you should see an activate button and then you can just click on activate and this should activate your version of windows 10 pro or windows 11 pro depending on what version you're running on your computer and that is the activation part out of the way we are now activated and we can move on to the next step okay so let's move back into the bios now and make some changes inside here so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to go in here and disable the csm you can see here please go to boot page to disable csm i want to enable the above 4g decoding and resize bar support that's what i want to do here to get better performance out of my system so what i'm going to do is head over to the boot section and disable the csm so down the bottom here you can see csm compatible support module is on and i need to disable this so i can uh, enable that other feature so we've now got that done so what i'm going to do here is go back we're going to go back to that same location we was before where it says above 4g decoding so let me enable this feature now and again we've got the resize bar support we're going to enable this as well once we've got this done uh, we're going to uh, push f10 and save these settings here okay let's head off back to the desktop here right click on the start button and open up task manager once you open task manager we're just going to show more details here now inside here there's a feature called always on top and this basically means that you'll be able to have the task manager always on top so if you're playing a game or something like that or a program you've got open and it crashes or it's frozen basically when you open up uh, the task manager push control alt delete and open task manager this will be behind the program or game and you won't be able to close it down so having that feature on allows you to close down the game without full shutting down the pc so next up what you can do is make sure your monitor refresh rate is set to the maximum it can go now i'm on my uh, test bench here and this is only a 60 hertz monitor but if you've got 144 hertz or more then you want to make sure you choose the higher refresh rate here and that way you're going to get the best performance for that monitor so make sure you change those settings that's a common setting that people forget to change and they're not utilizing their hardware to the fullest so let's move on back to our settings pane here and go to privacy and security now there's a bunch of stuff inside here which you won't need and this is inside this area here so i'm going to turn all of this stuff off now i know there's scripts out there and there's programs like shut up 10 and programs like this that will deal with a lot of this stuff but if you don't want to get into that sort of things you can basically go in here and manually turn off what you don't want it does take a long time but these are all reversible this means that you can basically reverse all of these settings back to the way you want them if you did something wrong whereas sometimes using scripts and other things like that they can be a bit more destructive so going through your computer privacy and security settings here will allow you to turn a lot of these background apps off and once you turn a lot of this stuff off you'll probably find that you'll claim back a lot of system resources and it won't be utilizing the system as much uh, by turning a lot of this stuff off so you get a little bit more better control over your system so if you're not using a lot of this stuff then just turn it off microsoft are not going to remove any of this stuff this is part of windows it's been around since windows uh, 10 
So if you want to get rid of it, just go in here and basically turn all of the features off that you don't need. Okay, I've gone through and I've tweaked all the system and turned a lot of features off. Now we're going to go into the settings pane here and check for Windows updates. It's important that you update your Windows operating system to get all the latest security updates and patches that will fix bugs and other things like this. Uh, Windows 11 has been working pretty well for me. I've had no problems at all. So I've been enjoying my use on Windows 11 compared to what I had with Windows 10. So I'll make another video about all of that uh, another time. But we're going to go ahead and get all of these updates installed on the system. It's pretty normal to have the system restart and do its updates on the reboot. So you may need to restart your system. Next up, this one's optional, but you can do a quick burning test to make sure everything is working OK. That means all the sound is working. Everything is functional and working as it should do. There's no need to run any sort of torture tests on the computer like Prime 95, Fermark and other programs like that. There's not necessary on a brand new computer. You're just basically torturing the computer which you've just built and there's not much point in doing it because it's a brand new computer. If there's any faults, you can always RMA them. Anyway, moving on to the next step, which will be downloading all of your software, whether you need uh, Chrome, whether you need other software like 7-Zip or Steam or any other programs like that. You can use this uh, Nunai app, which allows you to download all of the essential stuff that you need in one go and it will install it all in one fell swoop. Now, it doesn't do everything that I need, but it will basically get a lot of the stuff that I do need. And I'll get this inside here and get this installed on the computer. Whether you use this method or not, it's entirely up to you, but it's a really quick way of getting a lot of programs in one go and saves you going to every different place on the Internet. Obviously, if you need other software like Adobe products and things like that, you will need to go ahead and get those downloaded as well and get them installed on your computer. After you've done all that, you can create a backup of your system and you should be pretty much good to go. So if you follow these steps, you should be back up and running in no time and have your PC all running nice and smoothly with all the latest updates and all of the latest tweaks that you've done. You can create a image of that system if you wish, if you like to do that sort of thing and keep that image updated. So if you have any problems, you can always re-image the system back to the way it was before you had any problems. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. We've got quite a few new ones on there. So thanks for joining and I shall see you again for another video real soon. Bye for now. Thank <laughs> you.